Welcome back, Bordis and Bordis Hotline, right here on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Bob Pompiani with you until 11 o'clock, and then we switch over to KDKA with our sports, followed by the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown at 11:35. So we did a lot of talking today. Let's get right to it, beginning with Jim and Shaler. Hello, Jim. How are you? Hey, Bob. How you doing tonight? Good, thanks. Hey, yeah, rough game today to, see, to watch. Um, even though I liked watching James Conner, the reason why I was giving you a call is, is um, you said like James, the turning point was James Conner fumbling, and it was. But been through, a, he, he had three picks, what four or five turnovers. You didn't mention that. Four picks. Um, it seems like it seems five like turnovers, gets with a lot of things. He, he was not there. good, no question. And, and I mean, I mean, one so, of them was know, on. Just remember though, one was on Jesse James went right through his hands. The other was right. on a missed route to Antonio Brown, and I want to know whose fault that was because Brown went one way, the ball went the other. So we don't know a lot about those. But, yes, very sloppy performance. You expect more from Ben Roethlisberger. What do you, what do you think about the protection um, from Ben? Do you think he missed any of the Haley calls? Because uh, you know uh, the protection wasn't there today. Yeah, the offensive line could have been better. But I'll tell you this, Jim, uh, and we talk about this on the showdown. Tim Benz of uh, Trib.com brought this up, but I think it's a good point. It seemed to me that uh, Roethlisberger was playing more uh, backyard Ben kind of football. Uh, back in the day where he was just, you know, he would r just keep a play alive, look to make something out of nothing, and he took a lot of hits as a result. And I think that's one thing they wanted to try to stay away from in subsequent years. But they, and now that game today seemed like he was just, I don't know if it was indecision, people covered, you know, there are a lot of components to why passes go off. He was not on target early, and I thought uh, sometimes he was trying to hold on to the ball too long to make things happen, which is, is part of his game. But it seemed right, right. awfully like he was reverting back to that style, if you know what I mean. And I, I, I do think the defense played well. Um, it, cause it, 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 when Connor fumbled the ball, what, they got the ball in a two- or three-yard line, um, you know, and they turned yeah, the ball over again. Yeah, you can't blame the defense on that. Field. Right. Right, right. So I think the defense did play good. Uh, you're right about next week. They better gear up because Mahomes going to arm, and that team could that team could fly too. They're fast. Yeah, there's so no question. Nice talking to you, like always, Bob. All right, have a good thanks, night. Jim. Yeah, I, and I also thought the defense overall played well. Um, you know, especially considering there are a lot of questions about their defense. I thought T.J. Watt was outstanding. I thought Mike Hilton was outstanding. I thought Hayden, for before he was injured, was good. Um, and I thought the safeties overall were real good. I think Sean Davis was flying around. Terrell Edmonds seemed pretty comfortable for a rookie making his first start. And I think Morgan Burnett was always around the football. So there's a lot to like about that. John Bostick was good in his Steeler debut. Uh, but it wasn't the defense's fault today. It was six turnovers. It's hard to believe that they did not lose the game making six turnovers with that many penalties. Normally that is a recipe for disaster. Marilyn and Munhall is next. Hey, Marilyn. Hi. I was wondering if you thought that the outcome of today's game would influence when Le'Veon Bell would come back now? No. I think he has his plan. He's going to stick to his plan, whatever that plan is, and it may not be until week 9 or 10. Thank you very much for that. So, no, I don't think he will. Uh, he's made this decision. He's, he's prepared to sacrifice multi-million dollars to prove his point, that he wants to be the highest-paid guy. He already is, though. That's the crazy part about this. You know, he wants to be paid like two people. That's just not the way the NFL works. And they've, they've tried everything to get him to go. The Steelers, two years in a row, franchise tag, allowed him to miss all that time. That he, they understood that was going to be part of it, and now he takes it to this level. Keep in mind, the last Steeler to actually go through with a holdout and miss games was Mike Merriweather back in 1988. Other guys have held out in training camp. Uh, I think Heinz Ward may have been the last to do it. Um, Mike Wallace, I think, did it. I can't remember all of them. But they settled before they ever got. And most of them, when they did, they came in and got long-term deals. So uh, Le'Veon Bell is playing hardball, and he's taking it to a different level. Now, one of two things can happen. Nine weeks into this, the Steelers could be fine on top of the division, and all of a sudden you get a fresh Le'Veon Bell back. And if he plays the way he's capable, he can help them not only you know, win a division, but go far in the playoffs, hopefully. That's the goal. But he also could return to a team that is spiraling downward. Who knows? I mean, this division may be better than we think, and if they struggle because they don't have a consistent, uh, you know, one-two punch in there. I was a little surprised, by the way, that I didn't see Stephen Ridley, I don't think, at all, and um, also Jalen Samuels. I did not see him at all. If I can remember, I don't see snaps for those guys. I thought they may utilize a few of those guys anyway. All right, line five we go. It's Nunzio and Braddock. Nunzio, the microphone is yours. Go ahead. Hey, Pop, you just stole my thunder. I was wondering myself why Ridley didn't come in, at least for a couple series in the second half. 
to give Connor a blow. He looked to me like he was getting tired. In fact, the whole offensive line, is, as far as their uh, run blocking, looked like they were getting dominated uh, the whole fourth quarter. Um, and uh, it was a sad weekend for Pittsburgh sports. That's all I got to say. Thanks, hey, buddy. Let me ask you something. Don't go away. You still there? Yeah. Which was worse, Pitt or the Steelers, if you had to make a choice? Uh, Pitt. I had uh, high aspirations for them this weekend. I really thought they were going to pull off the upset, and uh, they didn't come to play. Uh, as simple as that. It was their worst game I've ever seen them play in I don't know how many years. Well, I thought they came to play, but they made so many mistakes, starting with the opening botch coin toss, and then it got progressively worse. And Pat Narduzzi got called for a penalty. Uh, there were a lot of things I didn't like about the way they did their business, and the special teams were atrocious. You know, and on a national stage, these are the kinds of games that Pitt needs to do well in in national television audiences, and they don't, and it hurts recruiting. It really does. Thanks, Dunsey. You appreciate that. 412-575-2600. Let's move along, and we will talk to John in Johnstown. Hey, John, how are you? How are you? Uh, fine. Uh, my, I think Pitt's going to rue the day that uh, they got rid of Dave Wanstead. If this was the best defensive team uh, that uh, Darnduzzi's had in four years, uh, I really don't think uh, you know he's telling the truth. Uh, I don't know. I'm just not too uh, interested in uh, his coaching, and I think uh, really uh, I really miss Dave Wanstead. I just want to well, get that out of my out of my. System. I think Wanstead's doing very fine being an analyst out in L.A. on Fox, and he likes it. Talked to him quite a bit actually, and um, you know he thought Pitt would win yesterday. And he, and he wasn't saying that just because he coached at Pitt and went to Pitt that had nothing to do with it. He thought they would. And I thought there would be a game. And quite frankly, it was for the first half. Pitt had a lot of success in the run game, but they made too many mistakes. And for those people out there who were anointing Kenny Pickett as the next superstar in the waiting, I mean, that still may happen, but it's only a couple of games we've seen him. I think you got to really be careful of that. He only was, I think, uh, 8 for 16, 55 yards passing. Uh, and when they ran the ball as well as they did, I'm surprised they didn't try to go down and play action a little bit more. They did not do that. Ryan Four, it's Tim in Forest Hills. Hey, Tim, how are you? How you doing, Bob? Good, thank uh, you. Okay, yeah, a couple of things. First of all, um, I agree when, when uh, Boswell tried the field goal in the overtime, I absolutely thought they should have – I thought the spot was okay for the field goal today. I thought they should have got it a little closer just because of the weather conditions. And, and secondly, though um, – you know, these things kind of happen. I'm not as upset with them tying as a lot of people are because, you know, yeah, you, you say they should have won the game. And everything, but Charlie Batch on the radio said, you know, as many turnovers as we had, we, we could certainly have lost the game. So, uh, yeah, but you know, to me, there are no yeah. moral anything with this game. They had a 14-point lead on the road yeah. to a team that had no business being in the game, let alone having a chance to win the game in overtime. The Steelers gift wrap this for them. That's pretty much how it went down. And they had an opportunity to put it away. They made too many mistakes, and you can't do that. And, yes, with six turnovers, you would expect to lose, but they didn't win. They went to Cleveland with a chance to win, and they did not win. And that has to be the overall number one issue. Thanks for the call. Kathy and Joey, hang on. We'll get to your calls when we come back right here live on Pittsburgh CW. 